Radio technology for cars began to emerge in earnest during the 1920s. It was expensive then, sometimes half the price of the car, and the equipment was very bulky, taking up lots of space. By the 1930s, car manufacturers, including Mercedes-Benz, had realised they could offer radios as optional extras, but they didn't cost any less than before, and were still bulky. In 1932, Bosch introduced Europe's first mass-produced car radio. Marketed under the Blaupunkt trademark, the Auto Super 5 was a medium and long wave radio which cost about 465 Reichsmark, or about a third of the price of a small car. It took up 10 litres of boot space, but at least could be controlled by a small unit mounted under the dashboard. The 770 Grand Mercedes, one of the great luxury cars of the 1930s, could regularly be seen with the new Blaupunkt radio fitted. But that was about all there was in terms of choice at that time. Following the Second World War, and the technological advances that came with it, car radios could become much smaller. In 1952, Blaupunkt introduced an FM receiver. Frequency modulation was gaining popularity in the West, as the old medium wave frequencies were becoming overcrowded. The Allied Occupation Forces had taken up most of the medium wave, or AM for amplitude modulation, as it was known in Europe, both to broadcast ent entertainment to their troops and to broadcast propaganda across the Iron Curtain. In addition to this, the victorious nations in the Second World War had enacted what was called the Copenhagen Frequency Plan, which left German broadcasters with only two medium wave frequencies to broadcast on. Therefore, FM was the only option for expansion. In 1953, Becker introduced the AM-FM Mexico, which included a variometer tuner, essentially the first version of a station scan function. It was in the early 1950s that Mercedes adopted Becker radios as their preferred factory option. In 1952, Becker offered a selection of car radio options through Mercedes. They were all named for racetracks or races, with the flagship Mexico a reference to the recent Mercedes victory in the Carrera Panamericana. The Mexico was the flagship unit with AM and FN tuning and a high degree of sensitivity and control to stay tuned into your favourite radio, radio station wherever you are. The Nürburg was a compact unit aimed at luxury cars like the 300 at an hour. It did not have FM, but it had long, medium and short wave receiving capabilities. Just in case the dictator in the back seat wanted to listen to something from the other side of the world. The Monaco was a push button radio with only medium and long wave frequencies, marketed as more of a budget option. Lower end cars such as the 170V may have been equipped with this. The Becker Solitude was an old-fashioned radio for its time. Marketing material f refers to tradition. The radio didn't feature push buttons for tuning, but had long, medium and short wave capability. The Tripoli was a, was a compact unit with heavy focus on short wave frequencies, possibly for use in Africa and vehicles exported there. By the early 1960s, the Becker range in Mercedes option lists had changed. The Becker Grand Prix was now the flagship unit, this radio had three waveband mono reception and the self-seek feature now called the Wonder Bar. From October 1969, the Mexico Olympia was offered and combined mono radio with stereo cassette deck, the first ever cassette player offered in a Mercedes. Car owners wishing to make use of a stereo cassette deck were advised they'd need at least two speakers installed to do so. From 1971 onwards, the Mexico Olympia was renamed the Mexico Cassette but retained the same features as before. Also from 1969, the Becker Europa was offered with stereo reception, but no cassette player. At this time, Becker offered separate cassette players to retrofit cars not originally sold with them. These can often be seen mounted under the dashboard of cars from this era. Moving into the 1970s, Mercedes dealers in the UK were offering a range of Blaupunkt radios in their optional extra catalogues. These were branded Blaupunk Mercedes-Benz and included FM, long and short wave receivers, as well as cassette players. In European and North American markets, the Becker range continued to be the staple factory radio option. The Becker Europa had become the new flagship unit, but features hadn't changed much. The Europa Courier was a version that had the ability to find and tune itself into local traffic reports, something we take for granted these days, but it warranted its own radio version back in the 70s. The number of speakers was also optionable at the factory. 
Typically two in the front was standard by this stage, and with a Mexico stereo radio, two in the back were included also. Cars could also be equipped with radio interference suppression equipment for a clearer signal. During the late 1970s, with the introduction of the W123 series, the Becker range got a facelift with bigger plastic dials and, more, and a more plastic appearance overall. Functionality was broadly unchanged, however. By 1980, Becker was offering automatic reverse on their cassette players. When the cassette reached its end, it would automatically rewind. Without this, the cassette has to be turned over and played in the opposite direction. The Mexico cassette unit by this stage had a new look, which was to herald in the look of the 1980s car radio. Gone were the big plastic dials, reduced by a fascia of buttons and presets. Rather than tuning to a station, the scanning function was now the only option. An LCD display showed the user what frequency they were tuned to. This UK brochure from 1982 shows a mixture of Becker and Blaupunk units available. It was up to the customer to decide which brand they preferred. By 1987, Becker were offering the Mexico with the CD option. At the same time, they also offered the Avis Courier as a bu basic budget option with the now old style tuning dials and no presets. For 1990, Becker updated their range with models receiving the suffix 2000 and a slight cosmetic upgrade. By this time, a 10 disc CD changer was also available. So you could have 10 CDs skip on you at once over every bump in the road, a true 90s experience.